Imagine becoming UFC champion in under five fights. Case study number one, Brock Lesnar. Brock is the real deal. WWE superstar, biggest box office draw in heavyweight history. Brock went from pro wrestling to being the UFC heavyweight champion and did so with such a short amount of time of training in MMA. A former NCAA Division I champion didn't really deserve it, but the UFC is a business, and business-wise, it made sense. Scary dude, too. Case study number two, Alex Pereira. Prior history with a popular UFC middleweight. Storyline too good to pass upon. He's gonna be at some pub talking some shit about I beat that guy one time. Former kickboxing champion, former glory middleweight champ, former glory light heavyweight champ. In terms of business, the quick rise made sense. Accolade wise, he deserved it. We have seen amateur kickboxers in the UFC. We have seen professional ones, champions even, but Alex Pereira was a double champion in the sport and objectively terrifying, like he has no soul and exists only to inflict misery and trigger nightmares. I mean, Alex is a big, scary fucking Brazilian. I think we all admit that. You're at ATM and this motherfucker walks up behind you middle of the night. You tell me what you're gonna be walking away. This guy, with his disgustingly powerful left hook, has slept contenders and champions in that sport. And this one too. At 36 years of age and just a couple of fights under the UFC banner, Alex Pereira is on his way to achieving peak greatness in the MMA world as well. He's, he's out there, man. He's up there. All right, because he has the vision. The vision when he fights is so calm, so relaxed. Early rise? Yes. Justified? You're damn right. Welcome to the fighting business. Brock Lesnar rose to the top largely due to his popularity in the mainstream world. And throughout his run, people complained, and for justified reasons. I don't hear too many complaints when it comes to Pereira, but for those who need a backstory to this guy, what he accomplished in kickboxing and his short UFC career, here is where you need to be. What is it like to face a monster like this? Even his striking will not be the same. Let his opponents tell the story for us. So don't fucking tell me just because you're some big fucking Brazil and you knocked out Izzy 20 years ago. Fucking I can't stand with and you. And describe the brutal mental and physical damage that this Brazilian rock is capable of inflicting. He's very one-dimensional. He's he's early on in this game as well. He's so I'm even glad to get him now. Before the UFC. Glory, headquartered in London and in operation since 2006, is the UFC of the kickboxing world that should bring you up to speed. If you stumble across a kickboxing fight on YouTube or a knockout clip on TikTok with actual lighting and good camera work, chances are that you are watching Glory. Now, who is the GOAT of Glory? Glory fans like us cannot arrive at a unanimous answer, but there are a few candidates, with one of them being Alex Pereira. He's just freakishly long and yeah. big for that weight class. And his power. Those guys are the guys I worry about. Nicknamed Poitan, as in Hands of Stones, Alex made his glory kickboxing debut in 2013. He already held world titles in the sport, but in the top kickboxing organization, Pereira did the unthinkable. He became champ champ. Won the middleweight title against Simon Marcus. New glory middleweight champion of the world! Won the interim light heavyweight title with a left hook. Unified the light heavyweight crown in a close battle against Artem Bakidov. And after a hard fought loss in the rematch at Glory 78, Pereira bowed out of the sport as a definite all time great. Mike Dante, I'm moving on to MMA. I signed with the UFC. I'll be fighting on Madison Square Garden in New York City on November 6th. I hope I got all you guys' support. But then someone over in the MMA world started talking shit. At the end of the day, no one knows who the f he is. He's gonna be at some pub talking some shit about I beat that guy one time, trying to get a dick suck from a crack horse some shit. Disrespect was not going to be tolerated. Pereira had dealt with this guy before, and it was time to do so again. But this time, in a different combat zone. Andreas Mikhailidis. Little known fact, but Alex Pereira competed in MMA during his kickboxing days, but not for too long. He had a 2-1 record and his fame in the other sport was simply too much, and so he focused solely on kickboxing for the next several years. In 2020, motivated by a well-known rival, Poitain returned to MMA and the UFC came knocking on his door. For his promotional debut, Alex was set to face Andreas Mikhailidis. 
Oh. Mikhailidis was a promotional newcomer as well, and he was one and one in the UFC. This was the perfect test to gauge just how well Pereira had adapted to MMA, and if he could not get up from the ground with this dude, he would have no hope of getting to championship contention. Alex Pereira was a proven kickboxer, not a mixed martial artist. In MMA, even striking is different, like everything everything changes. You have to be aware for the takedown, for punches, for everything. So even his striking will not be the same as in kickboxing. So. Not a whole lot to show here, but Andres made it pretty clear that he was not willing to stand and trade with Pereira, pretty much literally. As soon as the fight began, Mikhailidis attempted to hold on to Pereira, doing all it took to stay away from his strikes. He won the first round, but the stalling and cage hugging pissed off the stone cold killer from glory. Early second round, flying knee to the face, a few extra strikes, and just like that, Pereira had his first UFC win. And just like that, the middleweight champion stayed awake the whole night. Questions were answered. Pereira, we've been looking forward to you being in the UFC for a long time. Congratulations on a spectacular debut. This guy was a KO machine and had transitioned into MMA fairly well. He was still green, but no use putting the guy against fighters outside the top 15. Mikhailidis was not seen or heard from until a couple of months later, and after his second consecutive loss to Renat, the Greek fighter was released from the UFC. Months later, when promoting an octagon card, Andreas cautioned every UFC middleweight about the size and strength of Poitain. Uh, knee came out of nowhere. Shit happens, you know. But he's 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 a big guy. I wrestle a lot of guys. This guy, he's strong. Like I didn't expect him to have a, like this defense to wrestle. Now that he mentioned it, Alex was definitely huge for the division, and he never really smiled. One fight with the UFC, and the fear had already set in. Bruno Silva. Next up for the former Glory champion was an MMA veteran, rightfully nicknamed Armored. Bruno Silva looked unbreakable. He was a UFC new guys as well, but with over 30 MMA fights, he was vastly more experienced than Pereira. And with zero knockout losses and unshaken confidence in his durability, Bruno Silva was ready and willing to strike. You guys are not gonna see me fighting like Khabib or Denemaya. If I have two, I will but I'm gonna look for another knockout. Not only was he blessed with an iron chin, Silva had 20 knockouts victory himself, and so this was a big step up in competition. My background's MMA, I did start just doing MMA. I didn't do jiu-jitsu submission or kickboxing before, and I did start as MMA, and I'm still fighting MMA. According to Alex, 15 guys uh, denied to fight him, and I was at craze number 16. Yeah, because a lot of guys, they have fear, but I have fear and, and I'm brave, so yeah, I'm gonna fight him. While Pereira was a superb striker, he was hardly invincible, having suffered a few knockouts in his kickboxing career. And if someone was going to test his chin, small MMA gloves, Bruno Silva was definitely the guy. A UFC Fight Night 203, two great strikers at 185 Mets, and after a little while, it became apparent that Pereira was simply the better striker. Bruno had to wrestle, but the takedowns didn't amount to much, and while he didn't get knocked out, he had to survive to the third round with a broken nose, and the judges scored all three in favor of Alex. Well, we talk about MMA, right? A lot of people criticize my grappling, my ground, and I came here to showcase what I do every day. Someone actually took the kickboxing champion to a decision, but his aura hardly dwindled, especially considering the damage he had inflicted onto the superb, durable middleweight. Silva later came out with a statement, something about the pre-fight interviews and the promise to strike affecting his game plan. Um, yeah, every, a lot of people thought that I was gonna go into that octagon to survive, but that's not what happened. I actually walked in there to actually knock him out. Having said that, he still had to wrestle at times. 2-0 in the UFC, he had beaten a sacrificial lamb and a veteran, the next choice was obvious, especially with Israel at the top, contender, fighter, nothing. But who on earth was going to fight this dude? Sean Strickland. After the victory over Bruno Silva, the UFC had seen enough and pushed Alex towards the top of the middleweight division. More and more vignettes and clips of Pereira knocking out Israel began to flood MMA websites and Dana White realized it was just about time. Just one victory over a top contender and Pereira would be next in line. Fortunately, a top contender was idle and crazy enough to take on this beast. The American psycho, 
Sean Strickland. So I'll just, I'll just come out and say it, man. I've been training hard, ready to knock this guy out, train with kickboxers, and I'm ready. There was a mini tournament set for UFC 276. Strickland faced Barrera, while the champion Israel faced Jared Cannonier. This led to some glorious cross trash talk, mostly from Sean, but there was one moment during the press conference where the champion and his boogeyman greeted each other in their own special way. The rematch in MMA was going to be a sight to behold, but Pereira had to get past Strickland first. Despite all the edgy talk and general hilarity, there was no denying that Sean was a high-level MMA striker, and he had no fear of standing and trading with the Brazilian. So don't fucking tell me just because you're some big fucking Brazilian you knocked out Izzy 20 years ago that fucking I can't stand with you. Come on, motherfucker. Get out of here. What do you you're not even a good striker, bro. Like, what, what is prayer? If you are a fucking, if you are a normal sized fucking human being, you wouldn't even fucking be here. Your style sucks. Sean was insane enough to take the fight, and he was also insane enough to try his luck in the stand up. But maybe he was right. Andreas and Bruno's were barely strikers in comparison to Strickland, and Tarzan was capable of exposing a transitioning kickboxer in the MMA world. On fight night, Strickland didn't attempt a single takedown and actually stood in front of Pereira. Shoulder rolled, parried, and traded jabs, but even a seasoned striker like Sean was not able to deal with the skill of Poitain. And in the first round of the fight, that left hook landed, and that was all she wrote. As the next middleweight title challenger, Alex Pereira. Strickland didn't know what hit him. That left hook was potent against top contenders as well. It knocked him unconscious in the first round. Even Sean was humbled. It was official. We had a new number one contender for the dominant champion. Strickland and Pereira formed sort of a friendship after the fight and ended up as training partners. With the help of Alex, Strickland became the middleweight champion, but I doubt he feels any different about Poitain today. Here's the thing, you guys, about Alex. I could spar Alex and I could go point for point and, you know, I could, I could hit him. I could kick him. But the difference is the man touches you and you just... Die. You just couldn't stand in front of the freaking guy, but we knew for a fact his next opponent was going to. Israel Adesanya. It was a no-brainer. After knocking out Strickland, Pereira was headed straight to the mountaintop, and a familiar face awaited him. We know who's next, that Poatan, Poha. Next time I put you on skates, you're gonna get left frozen like Elsa. I'll leave it at that. Years ago, Pereira had sent this guy to the shadow realm, but here he stood at the top of the MMA world as the UFC middleweight champion. In your mind, when you face him, what's your message to Alex, and, and how do you see it going this time? Like I said, I'm gonna put him on skates and leave him frozen. That's the plan. You're so dominant, people just expect spectacularness constantly, so I like I like my back against the wall. We all know the history here. Pereira had defeated Israel twice, one time by decision, and in the rematch, Adesanya was put on oxygen. The question was, would it be the same inside the cage? Israel assured us all that it wouldn't be. We need to get this done, and we will get this done. And this is gonna be no different. I don't chase anything, they all chase me. You should've killed me in Brazil. But yeah, now it's my time and I'll crush him totally. Israel repeated what was often said, that was kickboxing, this was MMA. This isn't kickboxing, he does have a lot of experience and I've given him his respect, but this is my game and I'm the game master, so. He's, he's early on in this game as well, he's, so I'm even glad to get him now. And in MMA, Israel was a lot more experienced, a lot more proven, and with two losses to Pereira, the champion was determined to win, he just could not lose, but as he faced off against his old foe in the press conference, Pereira, who barely spoke English, warned his old victim. In one of the most anticipated fights in recent memory, the two rivals met once again under completely different rules and circumstances. Adesanya, who had dealt with criticism due to his passive fighting style, actually met Pereira head on. In terms of pure technique and finesse, easily one of the best kickboxing bouts in UFC, and this continued for five rounds. <laughs> Israel ahead on the scorecards, he was this close to defending his championship, but then Poitain found that one shot, and it was all he needed. UFC champion in his fourth fight, and on top of that, he had just knocked out one of the greatest middleweights of all time. All of us were expecting Israel to have a meltdown, given that he had lost to the same guy for the third time, but the former champion congratulated Alex inside the octagon and showed up to the post-fight interviews. I'll give him one thing, he knows how to recover, and it's kind of like the same story as the last kickboxing fight we had. 
you know, I'm up, I'm having him, I'm staying focused, and then he just catches me. Given his status as a superstar and a long reigning champion, a fourth act was a guaranteed, but fans were now certain that Alex had his number. But ultimately, fourth time was the charm. Jan Blahovic. Maybe UFC 287 was the one time in 10 that Israel was going to win. Maybe the bait worked, maybe the weight cut was too much, or maybe Israel and Alex were equally skilled and all it took was one shot. In the immediate rematch, Israel was the guy who found the opening first and Alex was knocked out. There was a case of a trilogy, but Israel said no. Oh, it's one of one in MMA. That should be a trilogy. Fine. I don't keep score. I settle them. But I'm say it's settled. The UFC agreed, and Pereira was left thinking. He could have retired as one of the most credentialed combat sports athlete of all time, but some time ago, Izzy moved up to 205 in an attempt to become double champion, and it didn't work out for him. The light heavyweight division needed a new face, and while a championship fight was not on the table for Alex, the guy who beat Israel was willing to welcome him. Send a message to UFC, I want him, and we have him, so I'm happy that I can fight against someone like him. And that's it, you know, I want to check my stand-up against him and try to knock him out. Former 205-pound champion Jan Blahovic versus former 185-pound champion Alex Pereira was set for UFC 291, and the winner was likely to get a championship opportunity. Up until now, Pereira had faced mostly strikers, and while Jan was pretty decent on the feet, he was just as competent as a grappler and wrestling Alex was definitely a backup plan. I want to check my stand up against him and try to knock him out but if you know something goes wrong in stand up I can use my wrestling and take him down finish him on the ground this is this is what I want to do. Jan had beaten up so many middleweights attempting to move up and you had to wonder would Alex be any different? The weight cut to 185 was brutal but at the same time, more power at 205, and Pereira was fighting months after a brutal knockout loss. UFC always seems to turn to you to welcome these middleweights up from the, the middleweight division. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is my job, you know, in, in UFC to, to send them back to the, to the low, lower division. So many high-level middleweights who have moved up to fight. Alex Pineda is different probably than all of them. Is the game plan going to be similar for him as it was for them in the past? Uh, I believe that's gonna be same. He's gonna lose. In the co-main event of UFC 291, Alex faced a former 205 champion. And in the first round, it was all wrestling. Jan secured a takedown and grappled the whole round, but Alex remained calm, fought off the submission attempts and survived to the second. That answered some questions about his unknown ground game. And in the second, Blahovic was exhausted. The next two rounds were competitive, but at the end, it was Poitain who got his hands raised, proving that he was indeed different from the other middleweights. He had just defeated the guy who beat out Asanya, and most of the MMA community thought the decision was fair, but Blahovic thought otherwise. That was all the former champion had to say. Regardless, Pereira won himself a shot at the vacant title, and that brings us to UFC 295. This dude has been in the UFC for a hot second now. And while some may argue that he got pushed too quick, look at the guys he has fought and defeated. And he's a big motherfucker too, so I, I, could, I held him down. And again, he's, he's a guy that recovers well. He recovers really well. But Strickland becoming champion, Alex has already faced three world champions, and his next fight against Yuri will be no different. Point, if Yuri Prohaska beats Glover in the rematch, yeah. and then he decides to avenge Glover and fight Yuri Prohaska, they got a great storyline. <sighs> This will be another violent collision between two of the most dangerous strikers in UFC today. There's nothing to left. We are, we are ready to die. And if he wins, if he becomes double champion in the UFC in under 10 fights, you know you are looking at a paragon of combat sports. Alex Poitain Pereira will not be around for long, but as I end this video, I have to ask, given the storylines, the hype, the violence, is anyone still going to complain that this dude doesn't deserve it? He deserves this, and if he becomes the light heavyweight champion, he will deserve much, much more. I hope you enjoyed, but I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.